Hello and welcome for another tutorial. This time, we will be creating a mechanical grouper assembly by CADEXPERT.com once more. CADEXPERT.com is an excellent site to look for 2D and 3D materials to refine our technical skills in pretty much any CAD or CAM software available. In this video, we will be making individual parts one by one with a complete set of guidance. If you find some portion of this video a bit too long, fear not, you may refer to the description box below. We have set up a timestamp for you to skip to a particular part whenever you wish. It's understandable if you skip from here and there since this one will be a long tutorial. But, if you're still a beginner and you wish to understand each and every bit of this guide, this will be perfect for you. Well, without further ado, Let's begin. Before we start sketching, let us first take a look on how each individual piece is assembled. This step is important since we'll be able to ascertain appropriate planes to sketch on. So the orientations of each part will not be as messy as the sketching in whichever planes we want. As we can see here, this component here is lying flat along with this part here. Here, 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 and here. We can visualize this by creating these parts on the same plane all throughout the creation process. But for the purposes of this video, we will be making most of them on the top plane. Remember, you can skip to each individual part by clicking on the description below. Now that's out of the way, let's begin sketching! So now, you can start sketching. Click sketch in the upper left and select the top plane. Click on rectangle and use center point rectangle. Now, add dimension on horizontal line with 25 units then press enter. And for the vertical line, set 80 units. Press enter. Add another adjacent line to right side. Select circle and create four of these. Like so. Select the circles and add an equal relation. Select the midpoint of the left vertical circles and add vertical relation. Do the same on the other side. Next, add a dimension between two midpoints of top circles toward the top and input 16.35 units. The circles below must move in the same dimension as well since we have already put a vertical relation between these two. Add another dimension at the midpoints of the circles, this time on the side, and input 19.55 units. Do the same on the lower one. It's time to add the dimension of this circle. While still in smart dimension, apply the diameter only on one of these circles here with 8 units. As you can see, the other circles have been set to the same size since we have added an equal relation before. After that's done, click on the lines drop arrow and select center line. Connect center lines on the midpoints of the circles. Select offset entities and select the added center lines. Set the tool options to add dimensions. Select chain and bidirectional. Click OK to apply. Set dimension to 85.90 units. Add another vertical dimension between the circle and the center rectangle on the origins corner. And input 22.5 units. Select the bottom corners 
at midpoint this time, with a horizontal dimension of 53.70 units. Remember the adjacent line before? Add a dimension on that as well. Then click on this side here and set to 54.15 units. Now press escape. Add other circles inside these circles and click drag towards the end of the line. Now that's done. Select line tool and apply tangent relation to circle by simply hovering over and clicking it. Check if it's set to tangent relation. The line should move along the edge of the circle no matter where you hover around it. After that, set point E to the upper right corner of the rectangle. Do the same below. We'll offset these two lines again by 10 units. This time, however, we will take off the bidirectional setting since we don't need another line on the other side. Select Trim tool with the Power Trim option and delete these features as I go. Don't worry if the sketch suddenly becomes conflicted or unsolvable, indicating a red and yellow line. Those will be gone after we have completed trimming these entities. At this point, we may now remove the center lines we have created earlier. Now that's done, select the drop arrow on Trim Entities and select Extend Entities. Using this will allow us to extend the site with specified entity connecting it to a nearby other entity. Use it here on this broken line then on the bottom as well. Before we finish sketching, let's add a sketch fillet on these points with 10 units of radius. Same as these circles here. Our sketch should be done. However, there's still blue lines around here indicating that the sketch is not fully defined. This can be easily mitigated manually or automatically. The automatic part being here under the display or delete religious command named fully defined sketch. Now, while this may be convenient under certain circumstances, it's important for beginners to understand how relations work in SOLIDWORKS so you can easily identify which part needs to be defined. In that case, we will manually select the features that need some definition, but if you already know of this, then you can click here or on the description below to skip it. Proceeding on to the dimensioning, Let's begin by using Smart Dimension on the adjacent line and on the left edge of the rectangle. Grab anywhere then press OK. The lines turning to black indicates that their position is now fully defined. We'll do this again on the other lines as well. For the next one, add a dimension on this line vertically, then horizontally.
Now that's all done. All of these should now have turned into black. Congratulations! You completed the first phase of this part. After that's all done, we can now proceed to extruding our part by clicking at Features and select Extrude Pose or Base. Click the Sketch Contour if it hasn't been selected yet. And type under Direction 1, 7.5 units. Click OK. Now we will sketch on the top face. Let's start by selecting the center rectangle and put it here on the right side connecting to the right edge of the part. Add dimensions of 10 units in horizontal side and 25 units on vertical side. Press escape. Now back to the rectangle, this time select corner rectangle. Click and drag to this point up to this edge. Specify the horizontal dimensions with 20 units. Press escape then exit sketch. We will be extruding this part again by 12.5 units. After that's extruded, click on the mirror tool. Under mirror tool, select the bodies to mirror then select the whole part. Then set the mirror face or plane to this face. You should be seeing a preview of what will happen after we apply it. This material will be made after we click escape. And there we have it. Now we will add a couple of holes here and there. But we will first create a rectangular slot here on the upper face. Let's sketch on this side. Select a rectangle again while center rectangle is selected. Then align it to the origin. Don't worry no matter how big or small it is. Just make sure it's confined inside the sketch. After that, dimension the vertical side by 10 units. Then another 50 units to the horizontal side. Select this left edge here and another left edge here and set to 4 units. Use sketch fillet on these points with a radius of 2. Press OK then exit sketch. Remove this material by using extruded cut. Select through all and now that's done, we will now proceed to making the holes on this side. Let's start first on the center circle. Right click on the face and select sketch. Normally, we can hover the center of this geometry by making center lines between the midpoint of these edges. However, we can simply hover this midpoint and on this midpoint, then follow the jagged lines up until you can see the two have intersected on that most center of the geometry. Now that it is indicated, we'll begin by sketching two large circles. Set this outer circle with 25 units of diameter and the inner one with 10 units of diameter. Let's make sure the sketch is properly defined by adding this dimension. After that, remove the material using extruded cut with a depth of only 3 units. Remove the material in this inner circle, then cut with a depth of 205 units. Press OK. Go back to that face again, and this time, we will add 4 circles. Select all circles and then add an equal relation. The diameter here is not plotted in the template, 
but we will use 5 units of diameter instead. Then align it to the origin. Add another vertical relation between here and here. Add another horizontal relation here and here. Now specify the dimension in between these with 31 units. Add another but this time selecting only one side of the circle on the top and set the midpoint on this line. Input 15.5 units then press enter. Do the same on the side. Your sketch should be aligned to this center at this point meaning that it's done. Select Extrude Cut again, then double click to this face. The cut will automatically level the selected adjacent face. All that is left to do is add the same shade as the original template, so we won't be confused once we assemble everything later on. When that's done, part 1 is finished. Pretty long? No worries, the next ones will be easier. So let's proceed to the next part. For part 2 onwards, creating those will be relatively easier compared to the first part we just made. To show you what I mean by that, let's proceed to making this one. First, we will be sketching on the front plane this time. There are two ways to approach the sketching of this geometry. We can use lines and circles manually or we could use SolidWorks tool feature slots which we will be using with ease this time. To start, click on this tool here. Then select center point straight slot, since we want our geometry to be aligned as much as possible to the origin. Click here on the origin, then expand the slot length to your desire. You will notice that by clicking, you can set the width of this slot as well as the diameter of these two arcs, since this is considered as one entity after all. Press OK. Now that's done, select this created center line from the slot tool. You may either define the radius of this arc, or simply these two lines to specify the dimension. Either way will work and it'll entirely depend on the sketch you have or methods you're accustomed to. For now, Let's set the radius to 20 units, then select the center line, and define it with 60 units in length. Extrude this part for 20 units, and make sure to select the mid plane here, because remember, it is always a best practice to have our geometry aligned to the origin as much as possible. Click OK. And we should have a general view of how our part would look like. But let's continue for now.
On the design tree, right click on the top plane and select sketch. Create a circle on the origin here. Using smart dimension, set the diameter of the circle 10 units. Next, create a center rectangle on these two sides aligned to the horizontal axis of the origin. Accessible to the origin. Click here on the origin. Then expand the slot length to your desire. You will notice that by clicking, you can set the width of this slot as well as the diameter of these two arcs. Select these two again and an equal relation. Press OK. Now that's done, select this created center line from the slot tool. You may either define the radius of this arc. If ever one of the center points of these rectangles get misaligned from the origin, just select the center points and the origin then add a horizontal relation. Now that's done, define the dimensions of one of these rectangles. By using smart dimension, specify the vertical side with 5 units, then 25 units on the horizontal side. Because remember, it is always a best practice to have our geometry aligned to the origin. This time, we will be using an unfamiliar tool unheard from our tutorial before. And that is this, point tool. We can use this to add an imaginative point without and connecting geometry. And we can use that as a reference of sort without overcomplicating our sketches. We will be applying the points from the center points of these two edges. Note that if we rotate our perspective for just a little bit, we can see that a point was created above the edge we selected. That's because we cannot normally make a reference here, especially if we are sketching on a different face or plane. Now that's created, click the midpoint of this line, then select the point that we just created, and add a coincident relation. Do the same on the other side, then exit sketch. Screw this material using extruded cut, and set the end condition to true all both, then click OK. Now, we may select this face and add another sketch. Using circle, indicate the center point of this circle and insert a bigger circle extended outside of the confines of the material we just extruded. Use smart dimension and set the diameter of the circle to 18 units. Click OK. Then select Extruded Cut from the Features Toolbar. Set the depth of extrusion to 2 units. Click OK. To change the color of the object, click on Edit Appearance. Then select the shade of color of your choice. Part 2 is done. Once again, we will sketch on the top plane. Create a center point slot on the origin. Extend it around here. And expand the width around here. Create a circle on these two points. Then add an equal relation. Now let's begin with the dimensioning. Specify the distance between these two points for 20 units. The radius of this arc for 7.5 units. And the diameter of this circle for 8 units. Indicating our sketches. We will be applying the points from the center. After that, Extrude this contour in the mid plane for 5 units.
then add a shade of yellow. And we're done! Pretty easy, right? Part 4. Some of you may ask, is this the same as using slots before, but with a different orientation? Technically, yes, you're right. So let's see how it will go this time. For this, we will still sketch on the top plane. Select the slot tool, but instead of a center point slot, this time, we'll be using a straight slot. First, click on the origin and drag it up to the left side. Letting go will let you specify the width or radius of the arc, but that won't matter for now. Create another one on the origin and create one approximately here. Then again, specify it regardless of its dimension since we will be annotating them later on. Create a circle on these three center points, like so. Select them once more, and this time, add an equal relation. Now, select the smart dimension, and specify the arcs of these two ends with a radius of 8 units. The circles with a diameter of 8 units as well. Before we proceed on trimming this middle portion here, we must first indicate other important dimensioning. The smart dimension is still being used. Select the two center points of this horizontal slot and specify the width of 34.72 units. Select the center point on the origin as well as the other one on the top right. Specify the horizontal distance for 20.89 units and the vertical distance for 54.24 units. After that, we may now proceed on to using trim entities. Select power trim and remove these unnecessary lines. Note that there will be a caution that will pop up. Simply pressing OK will trim the lines normally. Click Trim Entities once more to disable the tool. Click on this arc here and press Delete. Note again that while it may seem it did not delete, remember that we have created two overlapping slots from one another before. And by deleting that arc, you will avoid any problems with dimensions later on. Consider doing this if you're working on other sketches. Moving on, use a sketch fillet on this corner with a radius of 5 units. And the sketch should be done. However, as you can see, the sketch is still not fully defined. You may skip this part by clicking on here. To fully define the sketch, just add dimensions on these regions. The left side. Letting go will let you specify the width or radius of the arc, but that won't matter for now. Create another one on the origin and create one approximately here. Then again, specify it regardless of its dimension since we will be annotating them later on. Create a circle on these three center points, like so. Select them once more, and this time, add an equal relation. Now, select the smart dimension, and specify the arcs of these two ends with a radius of 8 units. The circles with a diameter of 8 units as well. Before we proceed on trimming this middle portion here, we must first indicate other important dimensioning. The smart dimension is still being used. Select the two center points of this horizontal slot 
is specified a width of 34.72 units. After we're done with fully defining the sketch, we will extrude this contour for 25 units on the mid plane. When that's done, create another sketch on this face. Create a point here on this edge. And create another center rectangle aligned to that point. Select the midpoint of this line as well as this point and add a coincident relation. Specify the horizontal side with 25.15 units and on the vertical side with 5 units. Extrude cut this sketch through all. And you should be perfectly done now. Add a bit of shade and we'll move on to the next part. Now for part 5, we will begin by sketching on the top plane once again. We'll start the sketch by making two circles here and here. Set up an equal relation between these two and add another bigger circle on the inside of this upper one and another one just below here. Add equal relations, select smart dimension and specify the diameter of this circle for 8 units and this one for 16 or you can write it as 8 times 2 here. When that's done, add a horizontal distance between these two center points and specify with 7.33 units. Add a vertical distance of 24.67 units. Click on the center points of the circle again and on this one as well. Specify the horizontal dimension of 3.36 units. Add a vertical dimension of 22 units and press OK. Now, select line and attach it to the lower coincident line on this circle and extend it horizontally to the right. Click on the arc tool and select three point arc. Create one like so. Before we continue on making new geometries, let us specify the dimensions of these entities we just made. Add a dimension on this line for 110.14 units and on this arc with a radius of 42.79 units. Select the line and the center point of this arc below here and specify the vertical dimension of 29.1 units. Also, the horizontal dimension with 59.35 units. We'll trim that part later on when we're fully done with our sketch. For now, create a circle just above the end point of this line and coincide the radius up to that point. Add another circle just a bit on the upper left corner and add an equal relation. Specify the diameter of these circles by typing 5 times 2 on the dimension. Specify the horizontal dimension of 1.65 units. This time, we won't be inputting 6.20 units since there's a larger one already specified over here. Click on that center point of the circle and on this one. And specify a vertical dimension of 40.67 units. Press OK. Now, we will mend this geometry to form a complete sketch. And for that, we will be using a line tool. Hover on this circle here, then click. If you move it around, it should be tangential to the diameter of the circle. If it is, 
hover it on the other circle until another tangential relation is added to it. Press OK. Select the line once more. This time, it will be this long line here. Hover to the first circle, then click. Then do the same on the other one. The confines of the sketch is now done. And all that is left is to trim all the unnecessary lines. Select trim entities and remove this. Note again that if some parts are left blue, just add another dimension or specify the relation until your sketch is fully defined. Now that's done, we will extrude this part on the mid plane for 60 units. Press OK. On the bottom face, Make another sketch. At a point here, on the midpoint of this edge, then create a center rectangle aligned to that point here. Click on the midpoint of this edge and this point here. Then add a coincident relation. Specify the horizontal distance of 23 units. Then the vertical distance with 25 units. Use an extrude cut to remove the material and select through all. The part is now complete. Add a shade of green here. And ta-da! Another part done! Moving on to the next one. Part 6 is still pretty much the same as part 4 before. So we can just open the part. Edit this sketch, edit a few dimensions here and there, and we should be done. Just remember not to save this directly, but instead, click on this arrow and select Save As. This way, the part file you borrowed from Part 4 will not be overwritten with the one we just made. And now for part 7, just a little bit more and we will be done with this part. Now for this one, we will be using revolve bows or base. This allows us to create a full part out of the cross section and half of the part we are making. To understand what I meant by that, let's proceed. We will start by sketching on the front plane this time. Imagine that there's an imaginary line here on the middle. We will only sketch the half of this and turn it into a complete shape. Let's start by selecting the line tool. Use center line option and check the box with the infinite length. This will serve as a base axis in which we will be revolving our part on. Now create a base shape of a half pin like so. Don't worry if some parts are out of shape and never forget to close the confines of the sketch as well. When that's done, select the Smart Dimension tool and specify the top edge for 7 units. This edge here for 3 units. This edge here for 25 units and this bottom edge here for 4 units. Once done, add a jumper on this point here by clicking on Sketch Fillet and select Sketch Jumper. Set the distance to 1 unit only. Click on the point here then press OK. The sketch is now complete. We will now revolve this part here by going to Features 
and selecting Revolve Boss or Base. Select the center line here as the axis of revolution. If no preview has shown yet, click on the selected contours and select the inside of the sketch. And as you can see, we can see a final preview of what our part would look like. Pressing OK will create that for us. But we're not done yet. We still need to make this other pin on the bottom part. And if you notice, we can't make a sketch on this face here. So how will we do this portion? The answer for that is to use another plane. To show you what I mean by that, click on the reference geometry and select plane. You can use this technique to create planes and allow us to sketch to where we can normally make a reference on the faces or in the top, front, and right plane. Now, try to select on the front plane. You can select this by pressing C on the keyboard and selecting the plane here. When that's done, the preview should be showing, indicating a plane where we want it to go to. This time, under the first reference, specify the distance for only 4 units. Press OK. The plane should be right at the spot where we want to sketch on below. Let's resume our sketching by making a point on the center of this edge here. Create a small circle just above that point and specify the diameter of 1.90 units with the center point 2.7 units away from that point. Press OK. Then extrude the sketch and specify the depth of 12 units. If the preview is showing on the opposite side, just click on this button here to reverse the extrusion. Press OK. When that's done, make another sketch on this plane here. Select circle and hover to this edge here. Click on the center point and coincide the circle up to the midpoint of this edge here. Specify the diameter of 3.5 units. And extrude with only a depth of 1 unit. And now we're done with this part. Add a shade and we'll move on to the next one. To be honest with you, the parts from 7 to 10 is pretty much the same only with a bit of varying dimension. So instead of doing those all over again, we can simply do the same as before, by borrowing our saved part, change the dimensions and features, then save as a new part so it doesn't get overwritten. We will be doing this quickly, but for the meantime, take a look at the dimensions that needs to be changed. You can do it on your own really, and you can skip to part 11 by clicking the timestamp on the description below. But if you wish to be careful and hope that you don't make a mistake, you may watch here. Ready? Here we go!
So welcome to the last part of this assembly. If you reach this point, congratulations. Your effort has been worth it. Be mindful that at first, it will certainly feel like a long process to do, which is fairly true really. But when it comes to creating other parts your own, there will be times your methods will not work as expected, and you will have to create another efficient, or better yet, easier approach to accomplish your project. So it's really helpful to get your mind prepared and keep on practicing parts until you have a clear picture on how to create parts in SOLIDWORKS. And for that, we will be uploading a lot more in the future, so stay tuned for more practice set. But for now, let's continue on to making part 11. So, as I mentioned before, this will have the same method as part 7 to 10, which use a bold pulse or base feature. Let us begin the sketching on the top plane. Create an infinite length center line here. After that, select a normal line and begin by clicking on the origin and create the cross-sectional half of this part like so. Again, the figure will not be important at the moment. All we need is to set up the geometry we need so we can continuously add dimensions later on. Now that's done, Let's start by doing the vertical dimensions first. On this part, we will have 9 units and 7 units on this one. That is all really. Moving on to the horizontal dimensions. Select this one and specify 4 units. This one for 80 units. Just add a dimension here and let it be for now. And this one for 64 units. As you can see, there's still that we didn't specify a dimension on. Remember from the last video? We can use a formula in the distance bar to indicate the dimension for that particular part. For a practical demonstration, we will set the dimension for this as 150 minus the sum of 4 plus 80 plus 64. The you can see, it's been set to 2 units. This is simply a reminder to how this method can be useful when working on other sketches. And we will now make this as a whole part. Use Revolve Boss or Base and select the center line as our axis of revolution. If no preview is showing, click on Select Contour. Then select the inside of the sketch. Press OK. Now you're done! Add a final shade to this one. And we are officially done with all our parts. Hello everyone! Welcome to the assembly portion of this video. I will be guiding you all throughout the tutorial on how to get the assembly done. We will begin by making a new assembly document by clicking new on the top here. Click on assembly and press ok. It should lead us to a blank graphic interface similar to that of creating a new part. But this time, we can see here on the left, a property manager open with begin assembly already selected. We can start our initial component by clicking on browse. The first component we need to place is part 1. But, before clicking on the graphical interface to place the component, remember the best practice. If and whenever possible, Always align your sketch or component to the origin. This time, since we are in an assembly document, we will place the origin of our component to the origin of this assembly. We can determine the origin by clicking here. 
and selecting View Origins. As you can see, we can identify the component's origin from when we started sketching it as well as the assembly origin. While we are still holding the component, clicking on the assembly's origin will automatically align the component's point of origin. Now that's done, our camera shifted to the extents of our component. Do note that every single time we put a first component to an assembly document, that particular component will always be fixed. Hence, it cannot be moved by other means until it is set to float. We can change this by right-clicking on the part and selecting float. But for this instance, we don't need to, so we will keep it as is. In order to add another component, you may select Insert Components here on the top. But if you have recently made or opened a part prior to the assembly, we may access them via recent documents. Pressing R will bring this up. Clicking on one of this plate will open the part document, but we will click and drag it to our assembly like so. This will place the part wherever we want, and note that these are floated, meaning that this can be freely dragged around by dragging the part. You may do as you wish although it's better to keep the components close so we won't lose track of it. For now, let us drop part 11 to the assembly. If you look closely to the assembly from the plate from cadexpert.com, you can see that the shaft is not properly oriented. If you followed our guide properly, don't worry, you did everything right. In order to rotate this component, you may select this arrow beneath Move Component, then select Rotate Component. Select the component to be rotated and change the Rotate option to By Delta XYZ. The XYZ on the assembly's origin will be highlighted. In order to identify which axis we need the component to rotate upon, look at these arrows below. Since we want our components to rotate by 180 degrees in its Z-axis, type in 180, then press Enter or Apply. If it moved, don't worry, it can be oriented easily when mating. Press OK. Next step, we'll be mating these two together to act on a specified mate. Click on Mate here. Select the shaft and this hole next. SOLIDWORKS will automatically identify the proper mate to be used. In this case, it's co-centric. Press OK. If we move part 11 freely, we can only move it on the x-axis since the shaft is constrained to the hole we mated it into. This is desirable. We will now finish the mate between these two by selecting mate again. While mate is activated, click on advanced mates. There are many other mates that can be used in SOLIDWORKS, but we will only go through the ones we're going to use for this video. Under advanced mates, select distance. Change the value to zero. The maximum value for 63 units and the minimum value for zero. Select face of this plate, then the face of this body. The component will move according to the set distance here, which is zero. Press OK. Press OK once more. If we move the component once more, the movement will be restricted as if there's a collision between the faces here and here. We know the maximum value needed for this mate because of this dimension. Now that's done, orient our view isometric first, then let's place another part by pressing R. 
This time, place part 2. Select mate again. Then we'll apply a co-centric mate by simply clicking on this face and on this face. Finish mate. As you can see, the parts are still not mended yet. This time, select this face and on this face. However, it's not properly aligned to the axis yet. Again, while mate is activated, we can fix this by clicking on the front plane of part 2 and mating it to the top plane of our assembly. You'll know it's oriented when part 2 is no longer freely moving on its Z-axis. It's now time to add another component which will be part 3. Bring up the recent documents again, then drag and drop part 3 to the assembly. If you notice, we need a pair in this assembly that we need to attach here and here. In that case, we can copy this component by holding Ctrl key while we click and drag it to a desired position. Again, the orientation on this one will not matter much since its sides is even and can be rather easily fixed by using mates. Using mates once more, we will select this hole and mate it to the other hole of part 2. Repeat on the other part. In order to fix this component between these faces, we can use a coincident mate here by mating this face to this face inside. Do the same on the other part as well. Press OK. And our mate should be fixed to that hinge by now. Moving on. Looking back at the plate, we can see a gray pin was used to act as a hinge between these two parts here. Opening the recent documents again, Let's drag and drop part 7, then make a copy of it. Mate the shaft and hole. Then mate these faces. Repeat. Now that's done. Not so bad, is it? From here on, the process will be the same over and over again. For now, let's continue until we finish this together. I forgot to mention, since the recent document shortcut could only hold much documents accessed previously, we can use the insert component instead. Insert part 4, then make another copy. Flip the other one to its Z-axis by 180 degrees. Don't mind it if it looks weird right now. Select mate, then mate these two holes together. Along with these two faces. If you can't see the middle hole on part 4, just move it freely, then continue on using mate. Do the same on the other copy. When that's finished, Drag our shaft way back to align the components we combined so far. Insert part 9. Make a copy. Make these holes and shaft. Then these faces as well. 
Do the same on the other side. Press OK. And our mate should be fixed to that hinge by now. Next, insert part 10. Make 3 duplicates. Leave the other 2 for now. Proceed on to mating these holes and shaft. Then these faces. Repeat. Now for the arm, or the gripper as others would call it, insert part 5. Make another duplicate. Flip this one as well to its Z axis by 180 degrees and rotate another 180 degrees this time to its Y axis. Align the arms. Then make another copy. Flip the other one to its Z axis by 180 degrees. Again, we will make this whole Then these faces. Repeat once more to the other side. Remember the other two pins? We will insert it on this side here. Do the mating procedure. Do the same on the other copy. Before we add the pins, let's insert the other members here first. This time, insert part 6. Then make another 3 duplicates. If you're surprised how many these are, don't worry. They still have the same mates from the ones that came before. You may start anywhere you wish, but I'll do it on this one first. Use mate to mate this hole and shaft, then this face to this face. When that's done, there's no need to add another coincidence to the arm's face since it's already constrained from the mates before. Let's finish the complete assembly by mating the pins we've left on these spaces here. Insert part 8. Then make 3 duplicates. Meet the shaft and hole together. Then this face to this face. Finish by repeating again for the last three pins.
After making sure that all members and pins are mated properly, the last optional step is to add an angle limit mate under advanced mates. We will be applying this limit between the gripping surfaces of the arms to show the limitation as to how much the arm will move considering that the other surfaces will collide to one another. For this, click on Mate. Then navigate to the Advanced Mates and click on the Angle Limit Mate. Type 0 degrees on this angle here. Then a maximum angle of 30 degrees and a minimum angle of 0 degrees. Finish Mate. Press OK. Now, try to move the shaft once more and see how will the arm behave. Now, we say optional because all we really need is to demonstrate the moving action of the arm. However, if the need arises that you should specify a realistic movement with all considerations to the collision surfaces, you may do as you please. I believe we have covered pretty much all aspects of this assembly practice. From parts of to the assembly process, let us thank at expert.com once more for providing a free set of exercises for everyone to practice on. This video is not sponsored by CADExpert.com, but we are more pleased to share available free resources on the web that people can have access with. CADExpert.com have a variety of practices available on their website that regardless of your skill level will help you refine and discover ways to make your methods and techniques even better. Browse their website now and become better at SOLIDWORKS! Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to our channel so you can tune in to our future tutorials. Thank you for watching this video and we will see you on the next one. Bye!